Today we are going to talk about Roll20. Uh, my group has just started using it for our tabletop game using a virtual desktop environment for maps and stuff and unfortunately as great as the the tool is, Roll20 is, it's not the most intuitive interface. Uh, so I'm, I'm creating this primarily for my gaming group and the people that want to run games in it and it's going to be kind of a, a real beginner's thing. Uh, so it's going to all be D&D 5e centered because that's the campaign we're currently playing and Roll20 offers a lot of really good tools for the 5th edition of D&D. Uh, now some things may not work properly Unfortunately, to get my OBS to record the screen, I had to disable hardware acceleration in Chrome. So that's going to block certain things. Like, I, I don't think I'm going to be able to do the 3D dice or things of that nature. All right. So when you first log in, you're going to see this screen where you, or where you have your games and can create new games. So we'll create a new test D&D campaign. just for this. Now you want to be sure you use the 5th edition OGL by Roll20. Uh, this is going to import the 5th edition SRD into the game, as I'll show you in a second here. So we create, we're going to pop in here, and now this is our, our desktop space. Now on the desktop you're going to have a number of menus. You're going to have this menu over here, uh, which is going to be all the tools necessary to manipulate the desktop. You're going to have this menu here, which will allow you to transition to different types of, of desktops or pages. Right now we only have the one. And you can open and close that with this page toolbar icon. It looks like a little page. We have our little zoom menu, which will zoom the map in and out. And finally we have our general menu over here, which has our chat window, uh, this will have everything that you've imported in, pictures, things of that nature. Um, I'm not sure what this is. Oh, this will be where we're going to have our monster manual. This will be where things go that you've created. Now, because we've imported the D&D 5e SRD, this is the 5th edition SRD. And this has all kinds of nifty information. So if you want information about the fighter class, you just go to classes, call up fighter, and you've got everything you need to know about that class. So that's really cool, and we're really going to use this when we get into making the Monster Manual. Uh, this is the music box. Uh, we don't really use it a whole lot. Uh, you, we don't use this a whole lot either, but you can put a lot of cards here. And you actually, it's something you could use with the Curse of Strahd campaign, because they use the Taroka deck. Then this is your settings menu. Right, so you can change your display name here, so like you can just become the DM save that name, and, and there's just all kinds of different things here. <clears throat> so, like, you could enable 3D dice, but, again, because I have the 3D graphics acceleration, the graph, the hardware acceleration turned off, we're not going to be able to for this tutorial, but I don't think it's, it's that important. <clears throat> and then you can also go down here and change the, the video player avatar size. I like to do names only, and you can see down here, it drops them down to just the name. Alright, so those are the menus, and you can hide this menu by clicking on this little button up here. This little, uh, three little lines. You can open and close that, like so. Now, you're going to use this menu over here more often than anything. So starting at the top, you have your select move and your pan view. And it's really just whether you want the arrow or the hand. Um, and we're not going to be able to do too much here because we don't have a map loaded. But with the hand, you can just click and drag to move the grid around. And then with select move, you have to do it. You can still click and drag, but you're going to use the other button. With, with the hand, you use the left mouse button to click and drag. With the arrow, you use the right mouse button, click and drag, and then you'll be able to select things with the left mouse button. We just don't have anything to select right now. <clears throat> this is a very important little tool. This selects what layer you're on on your page. As you can see, each page is made up of four layers. There's your map and background layer, which is going to contain 
uh, exactly what it sounds like, your map. Um, your objects and token layer is probably the, uh, the layer you're going to interact with the most, because that's going to have your player tokens, your monster tokens, uh, chest tokens, you know, anything that's an object or a token that can be manipulated in the world will be on this level. Your GM overlay is going to be a good thing for little GM notes that you might want to post in a room, or you know you could hide tokens on this layer and then drop them into the objects and tokens layer when you're ready for them to be seen by the players, because anything in this layer will not be seen by players. It's only going to be seen by the person with GM control of this map of, of this game. And then finally, the dynamic lighting layer, which we'll get into in an entirely separate tutorial. But this is the most amazing part of Roll20, in my opinion, is the dynamic lighting. This is for drawing. The, you, can, you can freehand draw, you know, squares, whatever. Um, that was draw shape, and I'm sure there's other regular, small, extra large. You gotta, that's the border. So like, if we go extra large, you're going to notice the borders are a lot thicker. If we go thin, borders are a lot smaller. I don't know that we'll use this a ton. You know, then you have free hand. So whatever you draw here will be there. Uh, polygon lines we will use. Because um, these create straight lines wherever you click. And we're going to use those in the dynamic lighting. But we'll get into that in the dynamic lighting. Text could be used quite a bit. Um, especially in the DM level. Whoops. Yeah, that's right. Um, I don't know what's happening there. Especially in the DM level. And then clear drawings will just clear everything you've done. Uh, this is the magnifying glass, so you can manually go in. Let's you know, say you want to be 200% or 30%, whatever. <clears throat> this is good for distance. So if you click on one square and then click on another square, or drag and drop to another square, you see that there's a distance line there, and it'll tell you how far one square is from another square. And you set those distances, I believe, if you go up to the pages, and, uh, whoops, go up to the pages and click on the little gear, scale one unit equals five feet, which is how D&D &D works. So we're, we just leave it at the default, because that's how D&D &D works. Uh, this is the Fog of War tools. We're not really going to use that, but if you don't use dynamic lighting, this is another way you can slowly reveal the map to players. Dynamic lighting does it automatically, hence the word dynamic. This, you have to do things manually. You have to, to you select an area to uncover for the players. We don't really use that a whole lot, so probably not going to cover it a ton. And we also don't really use this because we generally play in person. And then use this just for the maps and tokens. But you could use this to create an initiative order if you're playing online or even at the table. If it's more convenient than the little you know whiteboards we use. And this is dice. So if you need to roll a d20, you just roll the dice and it shows up in the chat menu here. So we rolled an 18. If the three di d dice were rolled, you'd also get a dice rolled here, but again, I can't do that because for some reason OBS won't let me use hardware acceleration in Chrome. And then this is their help documents. Um, I, I Some of their help documents, unfortunately, seem to be just a touch out of date or hard to follow for me, but they are there. Um, and that's it. That's the basics of an OGO, uh, of a Roll20 page that's creating your first game and getting it in there. So in the next one, we will go about loading up a map and playing with tokens and exploring layers a little bit. Thank you.